Hi, everyone. Welcome to Live with Genomi. I'm Ann Hine, Embroidery Software Specialist for Genomi America, and I'll put the camera on in just a moment. I'm going to pull up my comments over on Facebook so I can chat with everyone and see your questions. Let me get that going here. There it is. All right, let me get on there. All right, my comments are up, and I'm going to go ahead and open up the camera. Let's see here. And close this. There we go. So hi, everyone. Welcome to the afternoon. I'm Ann Hine, Embroidery Software Specialist for Genomi America. And today, you can see by what's behind me here, we are quilting our quilt. And this is our um, fourth part of our series of Artistic Digitizer and Quilting. And I have a little project that I started. It's a quilt I actually made a long time ago. I know we all have those stacked up somewhere. And, you know, we'll get to quilting them someday. So I decided that this series would be the time for me to quilt this quilt. And it's a small quilt. It's about, I think it's 47 by 57. So it's not a really large quilt, but it's very bright and cheery and it just makes me so happy. And today I'm doing the design that I showed, uh, I think it was last week when we created our own designs in the last series, we created our own designs and it's my design with the flower and then the little butterfly. So I decided to do that. And let me see who's out there. Hi, Marty and Janie and Lori. Welcome. Welcome. So let me see what we have up here. Oh, we have quite a few people on. Make sure you can hear me. Give me a thumbs up so I know you're out there. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start first over at the machine. I already stitched two rows and I'm on my third row and I did, I finished the first one in the row. So I want to show you how I place the second row and then, so you can see that and then how I do the next one in the series. Once I get this done, I'm going to come back and show you in the computer a few things that I do that will help, that helps me with quilting. And you can do the same things, um, even though I created this design myself, you can do the same thing with purchase designs. So it's not, um, and I have shown it before with purchase designs, but uh, this one I'm actually showing with a design I created. So we have Jane here also, so welcome. All right, so let me switch my camera. Oh, before we go there, when you're gonna be quilting in the hoop, you do wanna make sure your backing and your batting are at least five inches bigger on all sides. That way your hoop has plenty of space on the edges to connect to the hoop. Cause you may have, my design is smaller than my um, 10 by 10 hoop. So, and I have it in the center. And so if I was close to an edge, that means my, the middle of my hoop is on the center and then there's still a lot of hoop on the side. So I wanna make sure I get there and I'll show you, and you can see it when mine's hooped, you can see that. One thing you can do if you're, if you don't, you know, you don't have enough backing or you don't wanna cut your backing that big, you can always um, baste other fabrics around the edge and do that. And then when you get done, just take those off. I've done that on other quilts where I've, I have a specific backing in mind and I only have so much, um, but you always should, you always should plan for that. Cause even if you send it out to a long armor, they want it bigger. So I always add, you know, 10 inches to the width and the length of my quilt to figure out what my backing will be. And it's nice when you have whole cloth and you can, you know, the 108 wide and you, and you know, you just have to cut that down. It's nice. Or you can, you know, use your extra pieces and piece of backing and do all of that as well. So that's important to make sure, first of all, that you have your fabrics, the, you know, your backing wider, your batting wider, and then your quilt. And then you're gonna go and layer that up. And what I do when I layer, sometimes I have my big table set up, up in, the, in our living room and I lay it on the tables and I'll start with, I might start with the backing and I sort of tape my backing down and then I spray based. And so I would spray and put my batting down Put, roll it, more batting, more batting. And if I have to adjust it on the table, I do all of that. Then I get to my quilt top and I start again and I make sure I have it centered on there. And then I will flip it up 
and spray based on the batting and then roll down and smooth out, roll and smooth, roll and smooth. And I'm looking to see that my seams are going straight across or up and down. So I don't have anything, you know, going a little wonky. You don't want to pull your quilt out of shape as you start to put it together like that. And some of you don't like to spray baste and that's fine. Layer it up the same way. You can pin baste just as well. Um, I use the um, artistic tack and I like that. And there's a couple others on the market that I like as well, but artistic tack, and I'm not sure where, where we sell that now. I know we can't, I don't think it gets sold in California, but um, it sprays right where you want it to spray. There's not a lot of overspray. So that's it. And if you get it on your hands, don't wash them. Let, the, let it dry and then just kind of peel it off. When you wet it, it just gets more gunky. So <laughs> Learn from me, just like, just deal with it for a little while. And after, it's like getting glue on your, you know, when you put your fingers in that Elmer's glue and you're younger and you peeled it off, sort of like that. So that's what I do before I get started. I do make sure that I have those layers together. Even though I spray basted this, I did pin it because I wanted to make sure I was moving it around and I wanted to make sure uh, that everything was going to stay together today as I <clears throat> got things going. The other thing I've done, um, and this one needed it a little bit too, I actually pressed it again once it was all together as a quilt, all the three layers. I gave it another pressing. And I'm not, I don't know, the backing just seemed a little weird. And so I think it needed an extra smoothing out. So I, I have a big board. I laid it out and pressed it, and then I pressed the front side. You should always check too, and I didn't on this quilt. I, it's a little bit off. It, make sure your quilt is square. You do want to make sure your quilt is square and, you know, block it before you get started. This is a small quilt, so I'm not that concerned about it. But if it was a larger quilt, I do want to be careful about that part of it. So that gives you the background on, you know, how to get your quilt together and, you know, all of that. Now, I am using my, um, my quilting hoop that comes with my CM17. Uh, there are aftermarket hoops out there. Um, and you you're welcome to try those as well. I don't demo the I don't demo those as of yet. I may be in the future, who knows? Uh, but I do like our quilting hoop, especially on the CM17. They've made it, it's like a 10 by 10. And originally I was going to stitch this in that big size, but when I brought it over, I cut out a pattern and I took it over and laid it on the quilt, and I was like, huh, it's just not going to be, it's gonna be too big, and I'm gonna have to crop almost every row and the bottom and I just thought I'm gonna resize and I'll show you how I resize after I show you this part behind me. All right, so I'm gonna go over there. If you have questions, please post them. I'm gonna try to look again, but as I'm wrangling the quilt, I can't quite look at my questions. So um, hang on to, you know, you can hang on and post them and then I'll go through and try to answer them. But let me get my camera up and get myself in position here. All right, so let me get my machine turned on. So we have lights here. Oh, there we go. Look at that. So I'm going to bring my camera in closer so you can see, because um, I started my first row, and I'm going to bring this down, and I'll zoom in a little bit. So right here, I made a mark over in the side. Um, and before I start, when I start, when I was laying out my uh, quilt pattern in, in artistic, I figured out the distance between each row. And so I measured from the other row, from up here, down to here, and, and I need to be seven and a quarter inches and about a half inch in. And so that's where I was going, I needed to start my design, okay? So I just measured that, I made, I made a little mark out here, and then I put my grid in there and aligned my my uh, quilt to my grid and put my magnets in, okay? So that's how that worked. I'm gonna go ahead and pull my um, camera back a little bit so I can show you. On the screen of my machine, I use the hoop forward button. And I don't know if people are familiar with that. Let me see if I can bring my camera over. All right, so this is, let me close this. So right here, this is the hoop forward. I think in our manual it says hoop back, but it moves your hoop. So you select it and you can move it in any of these positions here. 
I usually use the center so it just comes forward. So I will, and that's where you, you can find where you can reset your uh, embroidery arm as well if you're in embroidery. So I'm gonna touch the middle one. It's going to bring my hoop forward. So when I'm wrangling my quilt, this is what where I, I pull it forward like this so I can work with it a little bit easier. Let me get this up here. And then if I was just starting this, I would put my grid in here. Hang on a second, something's going on with my camera. Did I unplug you guys? No. Let me see what's happening. It should be right here. Okay. I'm not sure why my camera isn't caught. Oh, there we go. Now we're caught up. Sorry about that. Okay. So I used my hoop forward. I brought my hoop forward. And if I was just placing this design for this, this next row, I've measured from up there down to here, my seven and a quarter. I made a mark. I'm going to put my um, grid in and my grid needs to line up with that because my design starts and stops on the center line. All right. I did that by design when you're working with, and that's why I didn't put my design up in the top corner or somewhere else. I I'm using it in the center. So I have these center lines to help me with alignment. And when you first start, this is a good way to start. You can use those for keeping your quilt from getting too wonky under there. And you know, you don't want your embroidery to go down sideways in your quilt. And um, sometimes I have a little issue with that at times. So I do have a printed template of my design. I have the center um, arrows marked. And when I went to the print function, I chose design only and then center lines. And then I drew a line across to make my center lines come all the way out. So I knew my paper template was on there. You can make a paper template or you can stitch on a woven uh, interface, in, like on an interfacing or even a stabilizer. And you could use that as well. They do make um, sheets that you can put through your printer and then they're sticky and you can stick them right on your quilt. Those work as well too. Um, I just use a paper one. Sometimes I don't even use the paper because I, can, I remember where on the grid my, my pieces start and stop and how far it goes this way on the grid. So I don't even need it. I just know I can line it. But I do like to see where my uh, design is going to go so I can see where the previous design is and how far away I want to be. And so when you lift this up, you can see I stitched that already. Hang on one second. One side always sticks. There we go. Let me move you out of the way. We'll zoom in a little bit. Let's see if we can see that. Hang on. Sorry. Sometimes my zoom on this camera works. There it goes. So you can see there's the end of the last row here. This one comes down. Here's that leaf coming up. Here's a piece of the other row. Here's some of the other row as well. And then this one is coming up just like that. And this is the end of, I'll zoom out here a little bit. It started here and it ended right here. Okay. I still have my um, thread connected because I want to tell you something about that and setting up my machine. Let me double check my comments to see where we're at. So you can still do this on your S9. You don't have the large magnets like we do. This is a specific quilt, specific hoop for quilting. You don't, we don't have that for the S9. And you can use other hoops on your CM17 also if your quilt will stay in the hoop. Or if you're using, some people will use binder clips to hold it to the quilt or the quilt to the, the hoop. So if you can't, um, if you want to use a, a, one of your other hoops, you can, you can do that too. You just have to, you know, you adjust. We're very inventive with what we do. All right. So before I start at my machine, I've gone to my settings and I turn off jump thread cutting. And I also turned, off, turned on one stitch stop. So to show you where that is, when you go to your machine, you go to your settings right here. And then I'm going to go to my uh, embroidery settings here. And here's one stitch stop. I'm going to turn that on. And I'm going to back up a page, a 
couple of pages. Thread cutting. I turned off my thread cutting. And then I'm going to touch OK down here so it'll take all my, it'll save my changes. The reason I turn off thread cutting is when you turn on one stitch stop and it gets done stitching over here, it will lock off and then do a cut. And on the back of your quilt, you'll have two little pieces of thread about this long. Um, sometimes, I, sometimes I don't mind that, but if you have a lot of designs, you'll have a lot of those little threads. So what I do instead, I turn off uh, the jump thread cutting, and then I also, and I turn on one stitch stop for the beginning. When I get to the end of my design, what I'll do is I'm gonna put my hoop back where it belongs. So it looks like it's at the end of the design. Let's see here, touch my hoop back. There we go. So once, you done, once you're done stitching, your machine will move to the center, all right? And so you'll have this long tail. You're gonna have a tail underneath as well. On my machine, what I do, because I have this on my CM17, the 15,000 has this too, is, and maybe the 550, 500E has it as well. Um, and the S9 may have it. This one right here, it's a needle and a number. I'm gonna touch that. And I wanna go back one stitch to this point. So I'm already done at 723. I just have to put in 722. And it's gonna, and okay, and it's gonna take me back to that stitch. So now I'm right there at that stitch. All I need to do is do my needle down, needle up. I can pull up my bobbin thread grab all four of these right now and then cut them with the scissors you've always put out of out of the way of everything. There we go. So one of these is my needle thread right there. One of these is my, um, let's see, one is a, the thread that, that ended this piece from the top. One of these is the bobbin thread that's at the end. And one of these is the bobbin thread that's underneath. So I'm just gonna lay them over there for now. And now I'm ready to go start uh, to rehoop this for the next section. But I do wanna make sure over here on my machine, you can see, it's hard to see, but my start, it's at, it's at the end point over here. So I'm going to uh, go one stitch up so it returns to the center. And then I'm also going to move it ahead. Let me put my foot down. I want to move it ahead one stitch so it'll go to the start of the next one. Oh, let me just get the colors back here. There we go. Now I can go there. There we are. So my needle will be in the start position. It's going to help me to align the next part. Now this is the part that's going to be hard for me uh, with the camera. If I had, a, oh, and let me bring my hoop forward because I like it forward. There we go. This will return to that spot um, at, at the end. Once I send my hoop back, it'll return it. So I'm gonna take all my magnets off and these get easier as you use them. The first couple times, and even today, they're still a little stiff, but the more I use them, they're getting a little easier to take on and off. Cause I know the first time I used them, I was like, oh my gosh, heaven to Betsy, they're gonna be hard. I'm gonna set those aside so I can reach them. I'm gonna grab my grid with my design on it. And remember your grid has letters up here. So you wanna make sure you can read them. And then the two fingers are at the bottom. I'm gonna lay it on my quilt in the hoop area. And then I'm just, I'm gonna slide my quilt over. So let's just slide a bit. Sometimes I have to put that needle up a little bit higher because it hangs below the foot. I have used my positioning marker foot as well on my CM17. Today I did not because I want you to be able to see all the way around and the positioning foot gets in your way. Let me just move this up. There we go. Give it a good slide. Now I know I need to be right here. This is the start. This is where I need to start the next one. So I've got it sort of on the edge of my quilt of the, the hoop itself. I'm going to push my grid in and make sure it's seated in all four corners. And this is important because sometimes what happens is 
you get it all set up and one corner is out and you're like, ah, and then it won't align. On my template, I made a little slice right here. So I know it starts right there and it end, it'll end over here. And I'm gonna be looking at the lines on my grid with my quilt to keep my quilt straight on this side. So over here, I'm gonna to try to bring this point and this point together. So I'll just slide maybe a little bit that way, make sure everything's in. I, it's right here now, I've gotta move my quilt back that way. And you know what, when you get to your third, fourth or fifth time, it starts, it's like clockwork. Once I get moving, um, it's very easy. So I have to move over this way a little bit. But when you're talking and filming, it's always a little more difficult. There we go. Oh, we're so close. So I'm this far away. I'm very, very close. I'm just going to slide this up just a little bit. There we go. I'm pretty good spot on. And I can fix that as well. So I'm going to make sure all my corners are in. Everything looks good. Everybody's in place. There's nothing weird happening. Any of my, I do have pins in this, but they're not in the way of what I'm using right now. And then I'm going to start putting my um, magnets on. And I do like to put them on, I'll put one on in, on each side. I'm not sure why. And I sometimes will go from about the outside to the inside. Be careful on the side that's over here where it's hanging off your machine right here. Um, you don't want to push it on really hard because it'll hang down below the hoop. And as it rolls back, it could get caught. So I just gently put them here. And then I'm going to put one on this side. There we go. And then I'm going to put one over here. Watch out for where the grid is. It has to be inside the grid. That helps when you're squishing them down on there. There we go. Now, sometimes while you're doing this, it does get out of place, but I'm going to show you how you fix that. Um, we do have the jog keys for that, so you can realign it very easily. So you don't have to have an issue. And the thing I didn't check, which now that I've done this, I, oh, I have to go back and fix, where, where my design comes up here, okay, if I pull this back right on the edge, it's going right on top of this other design. So I have to, this side of my quilt has come down this way. I have to bring it up. So let me undo this a little bit and we will move that. I'm just gonna move the three sides. I'm gonna leave this side over here. See if I can do this. Sometimes it's just a little cattywampus because there's a lot of quilt on this side and it could have just come down a bit. So I'm just gonna jockey that up. Maybe I will take this one out too. Let me jockey this again. Where is that? Ooh, very close. All right, now it's a huge gap, so let's not have a huge gap. Pull it down. Where's my start? Okay. And so when I film, it's always it always takes me longer. Right, still a little bit this way. Here we go. There, okay, that's better. Okay, maybe a little bit down here. Oh, I see. Close, we're close. The first few are always fiddly, and then once you get in your groove, it all goes pretty easily. All right, I think we're pretty well set on there. I'm not quite on it, but I'm gonna show you how to fix that. You don't wanna be really very, a lot off, especially if you have big design. It's only gonna let you move your hoop left and right or back and forth so far. But I'm only off by about a, maybe a quarter inch there. So I'll show you how to fix that. So let's put the magnets on. I'm gonna take a peek at my comments to make sure everything's going okay over there. All right, that looks good. Okay. So the interesting part that I find with Artistic Digitizer, and I've sh I think I've shown it before, is I do like to um, sort of set up my quilt in the software so I can see how it's going to be positioned all over the quilt. And it's something I did when I was a long armor. You could set up your whole quilt 
and then you know you're you would just go row by row here you could still do the same thing it's a visual thing for me and to see how the placement's going to look and if i have to do any cropping or something like that because i try not to have to cut off a design if i don't have to if i have to shrink something down i will so i kind of i have to do a little bit of math so i think we're pretty good here i'm going to take my grid out like this and set it aside and then i'm going to touch my hoop back over here put my hoop back in place and you can see this is where it's supposed to be let me get my camera in the right better position here we go yeah i can't some days it zooms like crazy and other days it does not want to zoom oh there we go okay this is good all right, so you can see my needle is like here and the start of it's right there. So that's where I need to go. Um, I need to get to this point with, whoops, I need to get to this point with my machine. Now I use the jog, I'm gonna zoom back out. I'll use the jog keys. I'm gonna show you where they are. You can use this for other designs as well. See these little arrows right here? These are your jog keys. So you would, in some machines, you have to touch something else to show your jog keys. They're hidden behind another um, another tool. So, you know, le left left and right and back and forth. This moves your hoop, not your needle, okay? Your, your hoop moves under your needle, putting your needle in the, you know, getting your hoop in the right place for your needle. So let me get this back here. I got this neat little cart now that rolls around. I think it's handy. All right, let me see if I can maneuver this while I'm talking. If you tap it, it moves very tiny. If you hold your finger on it, it'll take a bigger jump. So I'm pretty close. Let me go back. Oh dear. There we go. All right. And then I love my thumb wheel because I can come down here. Oh, wow. I am just like a few ticks off from there. Whew, you guys are giving me some good luck today. All right, so let me use my one. See how close I can get. Oh, I think I'll go one more. There we are. There it is, right there. Okay, so I'm right in place. All right, let me see if I can zoom in and I'll put my needle down so you can see what I'm talking about. I don't know if you can see, but my needle is right at the beginning of these stitches which is just right where I need it to be. All right, let me open this back up. Hang on one second, there we go. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I wanna hold on to my top thread. And I did move my machine to the first stitch, so it's, in the, it's at its first stitch right here. When I hit the start button, since I have one stitch stop on, it's going to cycle down and um, bring up the bobbin thread as long as I'm holding to the top thread. So here we go. So I'm gonna just hit start stop. And oh, my, my needle is down a little bit too far for the machine to like, so there we go. Fix that, here we go. That one stitch stop is on there. I give this a pull. There's that bobbin thread and I can pull it out. Now I have the two threads from my last piece and the two threads from my starting piece. And I'm almost ready to start. I have a little bit of my quilt hanging in the way here. So let me, I'm going to let you guys see from this angle. And I'll move my quilt a little bit. Typically when I'm quilting here, I have, this is on a cabinet. And I will open the doors to the cabinet and drape my quilt on the doors. Because it holds them up nicely. And takes a lot of the pressure off the quilt itself. So I'm just gonna kind of pull up this edge here and let it get started. Now I have my machine set on full speed and you know your machine will only sew as fast as the design will allow. So that's something to think about. So I'm gonna hit the start button and we'll let it stitch a little bit. And then I'm gonna stop and go to the software. We don't really need to watch it stitch. It's amazing though when it stitches. I am using a variegated like rainbow yarn, rainbow yarn, yeah, rainbow thread. There we go. It's mesmerizing. It just makes me so happy with this thread and this fat, these fabrics. 
and then it's going to come up here and start that flower. There we are. Look at perfectly about a little over a quarter inch. That's exactly where I wanted it to go. There we go. All right, let me stop that. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go back over here and put the camera on. Hopefully I didn't lose anybody. Here we go. Let's go on this camera. There we are. All right, let me check my... Um, if I have any questions and then I'll move on. Oh, everybody's good. Okay, you guys are so quiet today. Oh my goodness. All right, so sometimes I think, you know, I'm so lucky. I just love, I love my job. I'm having so much fun today. I had so much fun yesterday with my little applique project with the cutter, so quite fun. All right, so let me open the software and I'll show you how I work with the design and what things in the software help me when I'm trying to work with the design. So let me switch to the software right here. There we are. Okay. And I'm going to go down into my browser and I will go to my devices here at the bottom. I have a, I should have a USB, oh, maybe it's at the top. Sometimes my Mac puts my USB stick in a different spot. Oh, why is it not in here? Okay, hang on one second. Let me just wiggle it around. It always lets me know when it's not. Oh, there we go. Yes, I want them to be in the browser. There we go. All right, so we're in April 4. These are hard to see right now, but um, what I did is I started with my design, and I'm just going to pull... I don't think I have the full size one in here, but I'm going to pull this up. So originally my design was as big as this hoop. And what I did is I printed it out that size and then I laid it on my quilt and I said, oh, I don't think it'll work. And then I started to decide, okay, let me measure the width and length of my quilt and I'll do math and work with that. So I started with making the design smaller in different ways. And uh, let's see. So here, and I'm going to zoom way in. Here, I adjusted um, it equally. All right. I didn't, um, at one point, I decided, oh, if I make it skinnier and leave it tall, that'll be fine. Because my quilt is 47 by 57. So I do have more length than I have width. So I could have a little bit longer design. And then what I do is I use my array tool to create my layout so I can see what it looks like. And this is what it would look like. Let me get it back in the screen here. And when I select all of it, I can see just how big that is. This is um, six across and I think eight down. So when I do this, I can see down here in my tools, um, Oh, it's 56 inches height and it's 46 in width. So it's a little bit wider than I need because, no, it's just about right because I'm, I'm at the 40, I'm at 47. So this would, would be just about right. And the other thing that you can do in your um, array tool is set the distance here. And I knew, I figured out at one point, I just needed like a quarter inch between them, just about a quarter inch to make it all work out. And I just played around with different sizes. We'll go, we'll go get another one and see, uh, just a block. So here's one, this, this block is, um, you can see at the bottom, it's a little, uh, it's a little wider than it is tall. So I sort of played around with this one and did some math of dividing the width and the height into the width and height of my quilt. And, you know, we used to have that, the AccuFill program, and basically that's what that did. When you put your quilt uh, width and length in there, um, it would calculate how many hoopings. And that's basically what I'm trying to do. I'm, I'm calculating the hoopings and making my design fit within the size of my quilt. So I just kept trying different ones. And this one was a large, I left a large space in there. 
So look what happens when you leave a large space. You sort of get these lines and I'm, I am making my design go uh, one way and then the other. So to me, that was like, there's too many, there's too, too big of a gap. So a large gap I didn't like. And this is great because I am visual. And for me to see um, that part of it, it really helps me in my designing. This one here is, um, this one just has a smidge of, and I saved it that way, mirrored with a smidge spacing. So let's go in and look. This one leaves no error, no room for error. If you're gonna do that, if you're gonna make it that tight, it does look good. You can do that. You just have to be careful each, what I would do if I was going to really do this on a quilt, I would be drawing a line across, I would make a grid on my quilt and follow. Now I always start in the top left and work across my quilt to the bottom. I don't start in the middle and go back and forth and up and down or whatever, because when I used to do it that way, I'd always make up, mess up something somewhere along the line. And I'm, I'm really testing myself with having a left and right facing flower. But this does look really nice. And I think if I had a lot of time and I wasn't demoing it, I would try this because I could concentrate more. I would put some uh, registration lines on my quilt itself. So I knew exactly where everything's going. Now, what happens too when you're quilting is, <laughs> I just saw Debbie's note. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, the, uh, when you're quilting, your quilt will shrink up a little bit too. So as you go across, you might've had, you know, 47 inches. And then when you get done, you thought, oh, I divided my blocks into there. And I knew if my block was seven point, whatever, it would fit perfectly. And I get to the end and, oh, I'm over stitching into the, into the extra part of my uh, batting there. Well, some of your quilt will draw up a little bit as you go. So just remember that as you're working, there's going to be a little bit of drawing up of your quilt as you go. So you may have uh, you may have to do an adjustment down here. I try to make this row um, end up a little bit off my quilt. So if anything pulls up, I have room down there to use that part of it. And hopefully, give me some thumbs up if this is making any sense at all, or if I'm just, if it's just too confusing. I want to, let me see what other one I have in here. I have, um, so this one, let me see what this one was. So th yeah, this is the um, mirror. This had a, this has spacing, a little bit more spacing in there. So once you decide on you know how you're going to do it, and I'm going to show you how to use the um, the array tool. You can measure your rows so you know where to start each row, or you can eyeball the start of each row if you want. But you can measure. Here's the beginning of this row right there to that one right there. You can use your measure tool, or what I did is I made a little rectangle like this, and I deleted the inside, and I just brought it over here. And I lined it up with the top one, because the measure tool, first, I needed to get closer with the measure tool, and I just couldn't. So I can move this over and up. And I know these are little weird tips that I have. And then I can make this come down here just like that to touch that one. So I can see once I get that done, it's selected. It's 7.36 apart. So it's a, you know, uh, a little over quarter inch apart. So you, you know where, you know, you know what you're, how you're going to be setting it. But since you're using a template, you can eyeball this distance if you want to. And that's not a problem. All right, so let me show you how the um, array tool works. Now, my friend Debbie is saying, shouldn't I be making um, chocolate, chocolate carrot cake? Um, and it's actually, yes, I wish I was. It's the chocolate, uh, it's a chocolate carrot snacking cake that Heidi Property um, posted one day. And it is absolutely the most delicious chocolate cake. This is, I, I fed some to Debbie. Now, now I'm her dealer for chocolate cake. Um, it's a delicious cake. It makes an eight by eight square, so it's not too big. Cream cheese icing. Ugh. It's to, and you can't even tell that carrot just puts all the moisture in it. It's just delicious. All right, now you're all making me hungry. All right, let, let me go back and get my design. Here's my right-facing design. I'm going to select it, 
And I'm just going to pull it to the side here. It's just easier once you start making your array. So I'm going to go to my array tool right here for rectangular. And what you can do is you can figure out how many horizontal and how many vertical copies. So I figured I needed like six across, and I think I need eight down, something like that. And then you can hit enter and it puts those in there. Now you can set um, how close your uh, pieces are and see how they're not attached right there. They should be attached. I can change my horizontal spacing and I can either do it with a number and usually horizontal. What I do is I'll grab the, um, this, the little square and I'll move it into place myself like that. I could put a number up there, but for me, it's easier and I could take a look. Oh, it's close. I just need to move it over just a tiny, tiny little bit. Get my mouse to work. There we go. All right. So I know they're set uh, left to right. Now I have to set the distance here. So the distance is apart vertically, maybe I want them a quarter inch apart. So I'm going to put in here 0.25. And it makes every row a quarter inch apart for me. So I don't have to fiddle around with that. So this is going to look like this. And once I get that set, I don't mirror it at this point. What I do is I'm going to hit apply. And then I have my design and I looked at it. And at first I was going to do it this way, you know, all the flowers going in the same direction. But then I thought, what would happen if I changed this row? So I selected just this row. And I came up here to mirror. And then I said, oh, I like it. And then I selected the next row. If I could select today, let's see here, there we go and mirrored it and so forth. And I went down my quilt and selected and mirrored the rows just like that. And get the last one. So I could see, and you can see over here, it makes this little cool, it makes an extra little design on your quilt. So I think with my quilt having those V's on it, having this kind of thing happening, it's going to be really pretty on there, um, on my quilt itself. So there's the, there's the design that I have. And the neat thing is when this, when I select this one here, I'm going to copy it and move it to another page so we can see it. Paste it here and let's center it and bring my hoop back to the center. Now, the one thing you want to check when you get to this point is which way is it going to stitch? I want it to stitch from, uh, from left to right. And before I save it, I will actually move it so that these lines here are right on the center line. So let's go to slow redraw. And I can see that it is starting on the correct side. And that's because I used the mirror tool after, I didn't mirror in the array tool. I mirrored afterwards. So I know it's going to stitch from left to right. And the other one, let's see, I'm over here. Let's get out of here. Is that the one? The other one uh, will stitch. We can take that one to slow redraw as well. And it is. Oh, wait, that's not the one. What happened here? Let me copy that and take it to a new page and center it, and let's just do slow redraw. There we go, so it's starting on the left and going to the right. So I know my pieces are working the right way. Then I saved each one, one uh, right facing and one left facing. And when I sent my right facing one to the machine, I saved it in the machine so that I could pull it up, uh, what that would be in there, so I could switch right to the left facing one. And once I get done, with, when I finished the left facing one, I saved it in my machine as well. All right, so let me put the camera back on and see what we have for questions, if anyone has any questions on that part. So let me know, do you have questions on how, you know, how you move your quilt from section to section or how you, you know, the, the settings that I used from the beginning, I, I mentioned I turn on one stitch stop 
I do turn off my jump thread cutting. Just remember when you get done quilting to turn those back, to turn off your one stitch stop and your turn on your jump thread cutting. One stitch stop is great for a lot of things, but if you're doing a big embroidery, it will stop after every jump and it'll ask you to, you know, it'll want to cycle the needle and have you pull up the bobbin thread. So just remember to turn that back off when you're done and turn your jump thread back on so you have that. So when you're doing your quilt, you can round up a little bit on your um, width and length of your quilt to figure out how many blocks are going in there. My block, um, what I did is I changed the stitch length to um, 3.0 because I like a longer stitch length um, on that on the quilting of that. If you use a uh, like a purchase design, you can adjust that. I would take a look when you adjust it down or up take a look at the stitch count. Did it change the stitch count to see what's going on with that? Some designs will change the stitch count, some will not. So they'll just squish in so you'll have really tiny stitches. So you have to think about that. Some of those um, designs, because they're line designs, you can select them. You can go to convert to curves and convert them. And depending on if they convert to a running design or a, like a line design or a fill, um, if it's a line design, you can select running and then make changes. If it comes in as a fill design, sometimes they do, you have to um, right click on that and convert center line to outline or object to outline. And then you can make it a running line. Okay. Some people like to convert them to red work and um, that sometimes will give them a single run line. Again, in properties, check your properties to as and where it's starting to stitch and where it's ending the stitching. So you you know you want you try to want to go from left to right across your quilt. So you always have the same starting and ending as you go. And the jog keys are your friend. All right, you guys don't have any questions? I can't believe it. I answered all your questions. I'll wait for just a second or two here. So if you wanted that chocolate cake recipe, <laughs> you can just uh, Google. Uh, chocolate carrot snacking cake, and there's a couple of them. I use the one from, um, I think it's called Cooking 52 or something like that. And and uh, it is, now I'm, I'm just, now I'm going to have, maybe I'll make one on Saturday. I don't know. We'll see. It's not that hard at all. You just, you know, not at all. It's a very easy cake to do. All right. I think I'm all set. If you guys are all set, I have, I don't have any questions. Everybody seems okay. Thumbs up if we're all okay, and I'll let everybody go. Let's see what's happening there. All right. So quiet out there. Oh, there's one. Okay. All right, everybody. I'm going to let you go. Tomorrow, I'm not on live, but tomorrow the live is over on the Continental Club page, so be sure to check that out. And I've been able to stream on YouTube now, so my videos will be popping up over there. And hopefully I can go back and populate some of my older ones too. So we'll have them on YouTube as well. And if I don't see you again, if I don't see you tomorrow online, um, I'll see you sometime next week. So bye for now, everyone. Have a great rest of the day. And thanks for joining me. Oh, oh Ellen has a, okay. I'll take this last one before I go. Are all those settings available on the 550E? I believe they are. Uh, just go to your, in your set mode, you can look, it, they do have one stitch stop and jump thread cutting. As far as on the screen, um, I think you guys might have that little hashtag with the needle to tell you what stitch, so you can jump to, to a stitch number rather than, you know, paging through your design. And you do have jog keys. So just take a look there. Take a look through your manual too to help you figure that out. I know on some machines, they, um, some, tools are behind another tool. You have to select one tool to get the other. Okay. Um, I think we're all good. All right. Thanks for joining me today. We'll see you again soon.